Facebook and it takes about a minute or so. And we're in dead space, but that dead space is actually going to record on Facebook before I'm told we're recording and I don't start until I'm told we're recording. So just so you know, whatever you're doing right now is going to be live. Okay. Oops, I had a feeling I went to YouTube instead. My apologies. Live with Facebook. <clears throat> All right, welcome, welcome everybody. I am so excited today to have this conversation with my friend, Krisha Young. Krisha is a sex and relationship coach and a sexuality coach and a shadow coach. And she helps people get deeper with their self relationship. Mm -hmm. She's also the founder of the podcast, The Dirt and the Divine. And I don't even know if we need to give any description about that because the title is just so brilliantly explains itself. By the way, I'm Diana Lockett, and I'm so grateful that you joined us today for our Realign to Thrive with Facebook Live conversation. Welcome, Krisha. Hi, Diana. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, everyone in Facebook. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> Krisha, tell us a little bit about, uh, let's start by the coaching that you do. Tell us a little bit about the coaching, because there's a lot there. There's a lot there around female sexuality, shadow work, relationship with the self. And I love, by the way, that it's just by coincidence, we're having this conversation on the weekend of Valentine's Day, which yeah. for anybody, for everybody, my hope is that Valentine's Day is a self-love holiday. Yeah. So I yeah. would love for you to tell us a little bit about your coaching. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the work that I do with people is um, like, uh, it's non-marketing, like purest, uh, you know, my life's purpose core is really helping people get to their inner truth, right? Um, that's what it's all about. I am um, a truth speaker and a truth speaker. And when I am in front of an individual, I've always had this gift since I was like born. Um, it's my soul gift. And um, when I'm in front of somebody, I whether it's a client or even a friend or anyone, I have a very deep understanding and resonance with what is true and what is not true within that individual. So how I work with people, um, whatever it is that they're coming in to me for, whether, you know, they want to improve their relationships, they want to heal some past like traumas around relationships, they want to, um, you know, look at what their shadow material is and, and move aside the, the subconscious um, blocks and, and limiting beliefs that are stopping them from really stepping into the, the powerful human and soul aligned human that they are. Like for me, power is soul alignment, right? Power is truth for me. It's not about like achievement and ticking goals off and all of that kind of stuff. It's like being in alignment, being like it's integrity living within yourself and in alignment, right? And so what I do is I sense that dissonance or the resonance or whatnot when somebody is in front of me speaking about what is it that they desire and, um, or what is it that they no longer want? And I help them see what is the lie that feels like the truth, <laughs> right? The patterns and what is the actual truth that, that is trying to come through? What's the soul truth, the soul whisper, the soul voice? that's really trying to come through for that person. And, um, and then like the work that we do together is, is, you know, peeling apart those layers of what doesn't belong to that individual, right? What's the conditioning? What's the patterns? What's the stories? What's all of that kind of stuff? And like allowing the trueness of that individual to start to formulate and helping them with like stepping into that because it's like, 
you know, I mean, when you're, when you're shedding old identities, there's a period of time where you're just like, I don't know who I am because you've never been this soul version of yourself. You've never been that. And it's, it always was like, it resonates with you. It's truth for you, but you're just like, Ooh, are people going to accept this part of me? You know, this part of me was rejected when I was a kid. So it's, it's really scary kind of sometimes to do this work when you're letting go of the ego um, and stepping into that truth. And so I love like facilitating that navigation for people. Some, some might call it an awakening, right? Like getting, becoming woke, <laughs> like whatever language you want to use around it, really it's just ultimately becoming who you truly are. And, and like, I channel a lot of Ganesh um, energy and, and Ganesh is like the remover of, of obstacles, right? So it's like when we're removing all of the obstacles to your ultimate, ultimate truth on this planet and, and then giving you kind of like an instruction manual on how to be a soul in the 3D world, mm. you know, how to have that 5D connection to spirit and to soul and to yourself in a 3D world. In a there nutshell. Is, there is so much there to unpack. Um, I know. <laughs> first of all, I love, I love the intention of bringing people back into alignment because I am a realignment coach. My program yeah. is Realign to Thrive. And I believe yeah. that that when we're not feeling well in our lives, when we don't feel like there's like a nagging something happening, or it's a physical illness, or there's a disconnect in relationships, it's because we've moved out of alignment yep. from what our soul is truly meant to be here to experience. Yep. And so, I mean, we do very, very similar work, which is yep. incredible. I want you to, you talked a lot about some different concepts, and I just want to make sure that people understand the concepts. So one that you brought up was shadows. Yeah. And I would love for you to explain to people what you mean by shadows. Yeah. So shadow is the part of us that we want to hide um, or that we, we've become really good at hiding, um, pretending it doesn't exist. It's the, it's the part of us that creates a lot of shame um guilt right it's the part of us that um you know when when we just we just don't want to admit and if somebody sees that part of us like for me um when I was doing this work how I, I do a lot of embodiment work right so it's all about like what is your body saying because that's where our subconscious and our messages and everything lives right and our truth lives in our body and for me um whenever I was kind of like caught in a shadow behavior, which for me was like victim, perpetrator, savior, manipulation, like lying, like all of that kind of stuff. Like my sexuality was very deep in my shadow. And whenever it was sort of like exposed, either in a negative way or seen by someone in a loving way, it would feel like this panic in my heart. Like, oh my God, I'm, I'm you know, like I'm in trouble. There's something wrong with me with this, right? And so it's that, it's that, it's that part of you that you want to hide. It's that part of you that you want to deny that's there. You know, it shows up as anger. It shows up as victim. It shows up as um, like all of those quote unquote bad behaviors that, <laughs> that society has said are bad, right? And what happens is like, it's, there's varying degrees of this, right? Like some of us have light shadow and like light little shadow pieces and some individuals on this earth have very, very dark, very, very deep shadow material, right? Um, that's when you have like those really like very unhealthy behaviors that, that we, that we know exist on this yeah, planet, things, right? Things that we, you know, that can be incomprehensible to yeah. many of us, right? right. And we exactly. know that it's because they've got this shadow range yeah. inside of them that yeah. perhaps they've denied a healthy expression yeah. and so it comes out in very unhealthy ways and i totally get that because i yeah. believe that we are all essentially goodness in our hearts we are we're light. <laughs> we are all light but we've had yeah. different experiences that have impacted us in different ways yeah. and the way that i describe shadow it's that part of yourself that you deem as unlovable and so you work yeah. so hard to keep it hidden and the energy that goes into keeping it hidden prevents you from living your full essential self with the with the the full light and energy and life force that you're meant to express and it shows up in all of your relationships it's going to show up in all in work it's going to show up in romantic relationships it's going to show up in parenting yep. and often it shows up with, because you get triggered and yep. those triggers are an opportunity for you to turn the lens or the mirror to you and say wow what part of me am i not able to recognize in this situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and the thing, when we do this work, 
Um, like it's scary at first to, to admit that, you know, maybe I am a manipulator. Maybe I am a liar. Maybe I am like in victim. And like when, when the victim piece for me was really brought to the surface, I was like, oh my God, like I was sick to my stomach knowing that I had operated out of that for my whole entire life. And there was a lot of shame associated with it. So I needed to work on and heal and have so much self-compassion for that and recognize that it was conditioning. I was trained to be a victim. You know, my mom, my mother was very much in victim energy. And so that was what, how I learned how to deal with my problems, right? And so I needed to unlearn that while at the same time, like having that compassion for myself and not beating myself up for having this, right? Dealing with the shock of, oh my gosh, this behavior is all over the place. It's all, it's in my business. It's with my kids. It's with my, my partner. It's, it's here. It's there. It's like, wow. And, and learning to love it. Right. Um, I think that's the most important thing with this work for people to understand about going into the shadow is it's not about making the shadow wrong. It's about loving it. And, and what I know for sure, to quote Oprah, is that the only way we can truly 100% get to full on loving who we are as individuals is when we embrace our shadow. Because once we bring that to the light, right? Now, my victim has a name, her name's Vicky. She has a function. She's my early warning system where she used to drive my life. And so she was always like, poor me, somebody save me. And I and just want to interject there for a second. When she was driving your life, it's mm -hmm. in an unconscious way. So totally you don't even unconscious. realize that you're in that state. Didn't even realize. And that's the energy exactly. as well as the behaviors that you're putting out in the world. Yeah. So when you bring the light on her, it means that you're bringing her into your conscious awareness and you're welcoming the yeah. gifts of your shadow as yeah. an informant for your life. Go on. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Thank you for summarizing that. Yes. She had, she's now my ally, right? Mm -hmm. She's now my ally and, and we have business meetings. And when I feel her coming up, I've gotten to know her so deeply and so intimately, right? She's like my best friend. She was my best friend before, but she was protecting me in a different kind of way, right? And so we needed to go through her and I, this like kind of like battle of wits almost, this battle of control within my, within my own psyche, within my own self, within my own body, where it was like my higher self was like, no, I've got this now. I've got this now. I've got this now. Let me have this. And she was like, no, but I've been driving this for so long. You know, and like she was terrified of letting it go. And when she finally like saw that, the, that, that other, that higher self part of me was no, we're good. Like we're making really sound, amazing decisions now. And I'm listening to you now. Like I'm hearing what you're saying. You're giving me a red flag. You're giving me an intuitive hit and I am following it. It is building self-trust and self-worth, right? And have, it might sound a little crazy. It's like you're having this dialogue with these people in your head, but you're having that dialogue anyway. Like you're having it anyway. You've got the judge, you've got all these other characters in your head. You might as well turn them positive. And, um, yeah, now she's like my bestie and we're just, you know, it's like, oh, we're feeling something tweaky. Okay. What is that? You know, let's not get into a pattern about it and create a story around it. Let's just be observing and take our time and take a step back and be like, okay, there's, is there something here? Or is this just an old residue of a pattern that, you know, can just roll through and I see you. Bye. Yeah. You can go now. <laughs> so there's a sense of curiosity, right? When you start noticing whatever it is that's coming up for you, get curious about it. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and sit with it. Like so many yeah. people will, will numb or distract or ignore or yeah. avoid. And so these, they, they keep running the old patterns, the old narratives, the old stories, the conditioned responses. Yeah. And it's not necessarily going to serve them. It's certainly not in the evolution of their soul, certainly not in the evolution of relationships. Yeah. And you know, we're all about relationships. Yeah. How do people, this is a question I was on a panel this week and it was all for women. And one of the questions that came to me, and I'd love to ask you this question is for people who are sitting here hearing you say, self-love, self-love, we're coming up to Valentine's Day. I've got my little affirmation card, self-love that I'll be using as my theme uh, through everything I'm doing this weekend. How do people, in your opinion, find that place, that pathway to self-love? 
for people who are on that judgment part and how do they welcome their shadows? How do they start to love those parts of themselves that they have really a strong imprint that it's unlovable. And for me, part of it was anger was unlovable. I was not able to express anger. Neediness was unlovable. So I became very, very independent at the risk of any interdependency. And my have a shadow as well. Her name is Wicked Wanda. And she's my radar about if something is, am, am I heading, am I making the right decisions? Or is there something that's a little bit uncomfortable here that I need to look at? And yeah. so I'd love to hear how do people in your perspective, find their pathway back to self-love? I love this question. Um, it's, you know, when you get to this phase in your personal development journey, it becomes really personal. And I don't think that there is a one step fits all for everybody, right? This is, this is now where we're turning the corner from personal development into more that more spiritual work. So I work more in the spiritual realm of things like, you know, four years ago, three years ago, it would have been more in that personal development range where, where it was more on mindset and, and things like that. Um, and now it's more in that spiritual place of, of connecting to source and, and, and recognizing that you are a soul with a body and, and all of that kind of stuff, right? So in that journey is a lot of, um, there's so many tools that, that anybody could use in order to be able to get from that place of, of judgment and, um, you know, I, I call it like self-flagellation, right? Where it's like you're beating yourself up constantly, right? And, you know, it, it really boils down to like m having that um, desire really first and foremost to wanting to make the change because you're not going to make the change if you don't have the desire to make the change, right? So that, that little tiny seed of desire is, is what starts you on that path of then seeking what is, you become like this heat seeking missile, right? Of like, what it's, it's a seeking, it's a seeking. And, and what you're seeking is, is your self, is your soul, is your, is, is that own um, expansion of love within yourself. Right. And As so the famous Sufi, Sufi poet Rumi said that which you are seeking is seeking you. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's not out there. And yet we get so distracted by all the flashing things out there thinking that that's going to make us feel complete when the reality is you are holding complete, that is your birthright and everything else yeah. is taking you away from that. So the seeking is an inner seeking of how yeah. do I come back to remembering? I always say we have to remember. Yeah. Remembering who you are. Yeah. However, yeah. you can't, you can't, you can't go from in being in that self-flagellation space all the way to recognizing that it's within, right? So there's, yeah. there's the steps in between there. And the, the early steps would be, you know, like I said, having that seed of desire, doing the external seeking because the external seeking eventually gets you internally, right? So you might be drawn to meditation. You might be drawn to um, something creative, like writing, journaling, right? Movement. Might be drawn to movement, dance, um, even cooking or, or just like, so um, we actually, uh, my colleague and I actually had a, a clubhouse last night and we were talking about like self-care and self-love, right? And that there's a difference between those two, but also it's an infinity symbol as well, right? They're, they're, they're connected as well. So self-care in terms of like, okay, I'm going to start taking better care of myself. I'm going to start eating better. I'm going to start moving. I'm going to start, um, you know, having more baths and, and meditating and creating space in my calendar and, and time for myself and stuff like that's, that's like that sort of like beginning phases, which are still all those external sort of things. Right. And then what happens in that is you start to like, you start to see the patterns you start to see. And obviously, like I would say working with a coach or a therapist or some, somebody is critical in this. Like, it's so difficult to do this work on your own. You need to have that, that person who's like, I call it like spelunking, right. Um, which is like cave diving, right. You need to have that person that's kind of holding that bungee cord for you. So you can just go down and do your thing. And then they can like, okay, yeah, cool. I've got you. Don't worry, babe. Um, so that, I think that's a part of it as well. And, 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 you know, when you start to clear, clear, clear the, the layers of the stories and the patterns, you start to, 
get closer and closer and closer to your core wounds, closer and closer and closer to your core self. Um, and then it switches to more self-loving um, practices where you're setting boundaries for yourself. You're saying no more often. You're saying yes more often. You know, you're recognizing where you've been a people pleaser. You're recognizing where you are really self-harming. You know, like I found that some of the behaviors that I had were incredibly self-harming, you know? And when you start to see that, you start to see yourself as something that is precious mm -hmm. and, um, you know, worthy. You, you're building up that worthiness quotient, right? That then becomes the self-love and then they feed each other, right? So when you're having a nice bath, which is like a self-care, you're, you're, you're bathing in the love that you have for yourself as well. Whereas maybe in the beginning, you might be having, going through the motions of having a bath, but your mindset is still, you know, judging yourself. I'm taking too long in this bath. I shouldn't, you know, I should be doing something else or whatever. Right. So it's, it's a, it's a progression and it's continual. It's just this continual evolution. And I think just as long as you're following your intuition and learning to un unravel that over and over and over again, willing to make mistakes in that, then um, you'll find your truth in all of this. You'll find your soul, you'll find your purpose, you'll find that, that peace, that inner peace, um, which is also the love and, and the gratitude and, and, and the vibration that we're all seeking, that joy and that happiness, right? Yeah, I love that. So in Sanskrit, we call that Ananda. And the purpose of life is Chittananda, which is remembering the bliss. And you can replace bliss with love and peace and joy and gratitude and compassion and all of those wrapped together. Mm -hmm. And the problem is we live in a society that's given us different imprints and we have to, it's almost like we have to excavate and go back to that. And I love how yeah. self-care is the practice to self-love, yeah. but it's not self-care like I'm beating myself up because I'm taking too long, as you said. It's recognizing that I deserve this. Yeah. And how would I communicate this to my child or to my best friend yeah. or to someone who just needs a reset moment? Yeah. You would do it with compassion. You would do it with encouragement. You would do it with patience. You would do it with understanding. Yeah. I love that. And you mentioned, um, you mentioned about the, like the deep embody, embodiment work that's part of this because, and, and I'm an embodiment coach as well. And I really believe that we work and the work that I do is from the bottom up, that if we start, of course, there's mindset and there's beliefs that we need to switch. And there's a million mindset coaches out there. But if we don't deal with the tension, the winding that we have in our nervous system, in our embodiment, in the, in the deeply rooted beliefs of our DNA, if we don't work through that, any mindset changes we make will be temporary. Yep. And that's why people go to personal development conferences and they're like for motivational speakers and they're so excited. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to change my life. And a week later, they're back in depression because yep. they have, it's been an externally influenced source of transformation instead of an internally influenced source of transformation. Yeah. Thank you for that. Tell me a little bit about your podcast. And I was like, I don't know when my show is going to air, but I, we, you and I did a, an interview for it. I'm, it'll be coming up sometime soon. Yeah. Um, but I, I really, I love the name of your podcast. I love the intention. So can you tell our audience about your podcast? Yeah, of course. Um, so it's called the dirt and the divine and it came to me, um, in May, I think March or May or whatever of 2020, um, in, in meditation. And it was just like, you know, this is what I'm all about. It's, it's the merging of the, you know, the shadow and the light, right? Like we can't, they, they both coexist. It's the yin and the yang. Like you cannot have one without the other. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, love and light and, you know, bypassing out there where it's like, you know, you're made to feel guilty if you have sadness, sadness or anger or anything like that. Right. Which we are, we've already touched on. And, you know, I'm like, let me, let me just clarify bypassing as well. The way that I describe spiritual bypassing is just wanting to feel good and grateful all the time. Yeah. And, and that's at the expense of, well, I don't really want to feel this. I'm just going to go to the light. I'm just going to go to the gratitude. I'm going to go to the God of my understanding, but I'm not going to heal what needs to get healed in me. And then that, what that impacts is what I call the horizontal relationships, the being able to take love in and offer love out and connect with people deeply. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 
Yep. Yep. It's like, it's, I call it like playing whack-a-mole, you know, like when the, when the, that, that feeling comes out, you're like, bang, yeah. smack it back down. It's going to come out. It's going to come out. That's shadow too. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so the podcast, um, it started off as me, like just wanting like to talk about it. And then I'm like, nah, and I sat on it for months. And then I'm like, what am I doing? Like, I've been having these amazing, beautiful, gorgeous, high, vibration conscious conversations with my friends for like the last two years, like on Voxer or whatever. And I've been really wanting to have like publish those. And I'm like, hello, I created a podcast for this reason, right? <laughs> so I kind of got the memo finally. And um, yeah, I, I uh, so it's not really interviews. It's, it's conversations that I'm having with people. Um, and it's, it's morphing and growing as it goes. But it's really just about like, let's share, let me hear your story, like for my guests, right? Let me hear your story and how you went from, it's like a rags to riches in a way, but how you went from like that dark night of the soul into feeling this expanded, um, you know, space and, and what were the tools that you use so that, um, you know, more and more people can start to see that this work isn't a nice to have, it's a must have, like it, we're no longer in, in, in that state now where we can ignore this stuff, you know, like our world is clearly commanding this of us now. And, you know, in order for us to create a better future for humanity in the long term, we need to do our part at an individual level to get to that space within ourselves and heal and clear, right? Um, and so really, I just wanted people to see that, like, it doesn't matter where you're from, what you got going on, like you, everybody has access to, you know, this expansion for themselves and healing and feeling freaking amazing. I love it. And I do believe that we are on a trajectory of increased human consciousness right now. Mm -hmm. And that all of our personal evolutions are going to contribute to a global revolution. And so we yeah. all have that responsibility. Yeah. I wanna just share that Linda who's watching said boundaries is my model. And Linda, I love that because boundaries, boundaries is so critical for self-love. And I always tell yeah. my clients, no is a complete sentence nope. and practice it. Just nope, nope. nope. And that's really hard for women. Oh, it's really hard for women, really hard. but I want you, I want everyone listening, practice that this weekend. No. Yeah. Plain and simple. No excuses. Yeah. No yeah. need to define it. Just no, no, no. Thank you. No, thanks. I'm yeah. good. Yeah. Thank you so much. But that's a no for me. Yeah. And exactly. I just like, when I teach my clients, like, it's like, just get into your heart with it. Like, is it yeah. genuinely a no? Yeah. Then just be okay with it. Like that's part of owning it, right? That's part of owning that shadow piece too, mm -hmm. because the shadow mm -hmm. can also be like the bitch or the person yeah. who says no or whatever. Like it's mean, and it's like uh, no. Like the other day, I was driving on the highway when I'm practicing this more and more and more in every tiny, teeny little, teeny little nuanced area of my life now. Like I've got the, I've got boundaries in the big areas and small areas, but now I'm getting into finite little areas. And I'm even now not changing lanes on the highway. I drive like maybe twice a month, if that. I live downtown. I don't need to drive, but occasionally I'll drive. And where the highway that goes like to where I live, I need to be in the far left lane, which is the fast lane, in order to exit. And if it's nighttime, I, I don't feel comfortable changing lanes. I feel like I'm going to create more chaos if I change lanes, right? So I like to stay in my lane. And of course, what happens? I'm already speeding and I've got these people that come up behind me and they're flashing, 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 flashing. And I'm just like, nope, no, you can go around me. And that might be like, really, I don't know. Some people might be like, well, you should move. You're in the fast lane. You should move over and stuff like that. And it's like, no, because to me, it's unsafe for me to move and I need to exit. My exit's coming up. So I'm going to take care of me in this instant. I'm already going faster than the speed limit to begin with, right? And maybe that person needs to slow down a little bit anyway. So I feel like maybe I'm doing a little bit of service to humanity there too, in a way. But it's like, it's just like all the little subtleties. Where are all the little tiny areas that you can hold that boundary and hold that space for your needs? What do you need? And you said right. a word that I think is really key. And I work with this a lot with my clients is the safety piece of it. 
-hmm. We need to create the internal safety to really be able to start to excavate and know, K-N-O-W, what our no is. Yeah. And sometimes no yep. is saying yes to you and sometimes saying yes to another is okay as well. Yep. But if you don't have that, that feedback mechanism inside of you that says, this feels great or, oh, this didn't feel great. If you don't have that internal connection, that radar inside, then what happens yeah. is we become what most women are when they have blocked energy and kinked nervous systems is we become yeah. people pleasers. Yes. And so we do everything for everyone else at the risk of really denying ourselves. So I love that boundaries right. came up in the conversation. There's a few people that are appreciating that too. And I agree with you, Barbara, it's a muscle. It's a, it muscle, a muscle that we have to develop. And if we didn't have that imprint, it's going to feel like really weak at first. And the more you practice it, the stronger it gets. And it comes from here. It's a loving muscle. It's not something that needs to come from an egoic mind. It's a loving mu muscle. Yep. All right. Um, you have something to offer our listeners, right? I do. I have a free five-day receiving challenge. So, you know, I mean... <laughs> The biggest part for when we're when we're embodied in our feminine is, and is the ability to be able to receive, right? Mm -hmm. And receiving is so juicy and wonderful and lovely. And you know, it can be anything from like receiving a compliment to receiving help to receiving money to opportunities, like all of it. And when we can get to that juicy space of um increasing our worth our own inner worth to receive right then we go in what what i call um like we have access to like goddess currency right which is basically just like yeah i want something bing you know and and we use that magic of the universe um when we've cultivated that energy to be able to call in these beautiful pieces to ourselves but it starts with taking a look at how how good are you at receiving compliments? Most women are not great at it. You know, like, oh, this old thing? No, 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 no. Well, my hair is awful or, oh, yeah. No, no more of that. Uh-uh. No mas. Just simply <laughs> you know, thank love you. on yourself. Thank you. I receive that is what thank I say to people. Exactly. Thank you. Yes. I, re thank I can you. receive that. And then I take yeah. a moment and I, I breathe. Yeah, you feel so that it. I can fully receive it into my system. Yeah. And it's not just, I'm not playing this ping pong game with my mind saying, no, no, they're just being nice. It's like, I yeah. fully receive, I receive it. it. Love yeah. this. Love yeah. this. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're five days and we go through different, different areas of receiving from the, the compliments to help, to love material, 3D material things as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to put that in the comments of right. this, of this um, Facebook video. Yeah. And is there anything else that you want people to know? How can they contact you, Krisha? Um, yeah, well, I'm on Instagram. So at the Krisha Young, um, uh, Facebook as well. So I think I'm tagged on this. So you if are, anybody yeah. wants to friend request me, um, The Dirt and the Divine, my podcast is on Spotify, iTunes, and um, YouTube as well. So you can just like Google that. Um, what do I want to say? It, it, it's just... We didn't go comments. into my, yeah, you, we didn't go into my, my backstory, but you know, like, I mean, it, it, there was a lot of trauma for me as a child. It wasn't like a happy, you know, upbringing, but what I always had inside of me was this knowing that I was here for more. And I, I just listened to that. And I had a lot of like, really not great experiences, abusive relationships, all sorts of stuff. But in that was, I'm here for more, I'm here for more, and I'm here for more. And when I finally started to listen to that, that's when my life started to change. And I went and I got to work. I got to work. And I started looking at my patterns. I started looking at my shadow. I started looking at all of those pieces in order to be able to um, get to the space of truly, genuinely loving myself. So I know it's possible because I did it. I self-loathed and self-flagellated every day, all the time. Did not like who I was. Didn't think I was here for a reason. Couldn't understand why I was on this planet and did all of that work. And now here I am. So just to encourage anybody who's watching or listening to say like, don't give up on your journey. Just keep listening to your heart. Keep listening to your intuition. Trust it, trust it, trust it you know, I love that there's a Feel golden that. essence in all of us. Mm -hmm. And 
believe that it's there. Yeah. And then I love that you've brought up the feminine energy because our, as a yeah. society, we are so rooted in masculine energy, which is, which we all have both of them, by the way, but the masculine energy is very much doing mm -hmm. and creating the container and the feminine energy needs to receive and needs to move. And this has been a real practice for me because as a yoga teacher trainer, yoga can be very masculine. Meditation yeah. is very masculine. It is. Yeah. yeah. And so I've had to really incorporate and embody movements, receptivity, flow into my life to be able to cultivate that balance. I love it. Yeah. I already have a few people that said they want to take part in your five day receiving challenge. I think Yay. I'll be there as well. So that's amazing. Yeah. And I said to Krisha, we met about, um, I think three or four years ago now, we met on a, on a, a stage, um, a mind body yeah. um, change maker yeah. event that we were both yeah. participating in. Yeah. And we didn't, we, I kind of, we kind of lost touch for a little bit and then reconnected. And the last time we chatted or a couple of times ago that we chatted, I said, you know, you and I are going to be doing, we're going to be collaborating on something because we speak the exact same language. We do the exact same work and we have such a strong intention to bring forward into the world, the possibility for women to step into their gold to believe that it's not just us, that we all get to do this work. We all get to touch our light and to feel our essential goodness and to bring that brightness into the world. So I'm so grateful that we've been able to reconnect yeah. and I look forward to us collaborating in the future. Yes, and I want to thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. I thank you so much for being here. It's thank been such a pleasure. Me. I, I yeah. know that the people listening to it are going to really enjoy it. And don't forget, you can connect with Krisha on Facebook. She's... Um, She's tagged in this post where the video is, as well as on Instagram at Krisha Young. And then her five day receiving challenge will be posted below here as well. That's great. And this yep. weekend, friends, please do something Absolutely. for you that is of self care and interpret that self care as self love. Final words, Krisha? Um, just thank you. I'm just grateful to be here and grateful to speak to anybody. And if anybody has any questions, I'm happy to, you know, pop on the, the live here and, and respond and answer to anything um, that, that, you know, down a little later on today, if something pops up, I'm happy to do that. Yeah, I think right now there's lots of comments more than questions. A lot of like, I think people are just resonating with the conversation. So yeah. it's definitely yes, it's a true. required conversation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you. We thank you so much. Yes, <laughs> yes. I really love this. I love that you came on. I love what you're doing in the world. And I look forward to collaborating again with you soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Diana. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs> All right, so we've stopped the live stream. I'll stop cool. the recording. Yeah. That was awesome.